Hello everyone. This is another short video about a small thing that can help you a lot when you are doing breadboarding and need to hook up something to your design. There are a bunch of interface components that are a little bit tricky to connect directly to the breadboard. They have a footprint that doesn't work with a 0.1 inch spacing. The legs sit too tight so you can't reach the individual pins. Or the legs are too wide so they don't fit. Or you might destroy the bus bar connector if you force them in. Or the stability is just poor, so you might get a loose connection. One possible solution would be to get hold of a dedicated breadboarding workplace that helps you with these problems. And there are a couple of solutions available, for example this one. But uh, the price tag might scare some people off. <laughs> At least it scares me off. The Labour from Erika Synths is a perfect choice for Eurorack and Synth DIY development. But even if it's much cheaper than the previous one, this may still not fit your hobby budget. I have made my own breadboarding workstation and there is a separate video on my channel covering that. I'll put the link in the description. But the simplest and cheapest solution is to make small breadboard adapters for all of those components that is giving you a hard time to fit on the breadboard. They will of course occupy some more space on the breadboard, but I use a couple of cheap breadboards just for that purpose. Alright, the adapters are made as small PCBs with two rows of pin headers and a number of PCB footprints stacked on top of each other. So the PCB can be used for different components depending on what you need. The PCBs are ordered as a panel with a V-cut scoring, so it's possible to separate the PCBs by breaking them apart. A panel consists of 16 small PCBs, so that will be enough for a while I think. So, the first one is called Breakout 1 and adds provisions for a cherry key with an LED, a 3.5mm mono and stereo jacks. My previous solution was to solder wires to these components to be able to connect them to the breadboard. And it was really flimsy to plug cables in and out. Another advantage is that I now can hook up a number of cherry keys with LEDs side by side to try out a user interface. The next one is not surprisingly called Breakout 2 and this one has room for an encoder switch, alpha pots and Song Huey trimmer pots. There is also a footprint for a 6x6mm tactile switch. I already have most of the potentiometer values on my breadboarding workstations. But sometimes I need more than one value of a certain type. And sometimes I need to have a logarithmic pot in my design. Alright, as you probably can guess already, Breakout 3 is actually in the making right now. And there might be a 4 and a 5 as well, to cover more connectors and other components. So that's it for today. I promised that it should be a short video. The Gerber files can be found on my GitHub as usual. I'll put the link in the description so you can find it. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon again. Bye for now.